Investors selling some big name tech stocks as they rotate into value stocks Wednesday, um, putting a damper on the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. Let's get some sense as to what direction this market is headed. For that, we turn to J.J. Kenahan, Chief Market Strategist at TD Ameritrade. Welcome back, J.J., and good afternoon to you. Thanks for having me, Fred. Always a pleasure to be here with you. Great always to have you, J.J. Now, we've got a mixed market today, but Monday we saw that sharp, uh, uh, steep, uh, big rebound, and followed Tuesday by uh, a sharp downturn. So where is this market heading? Well, I think, Fred, if you even go back to last week, where you saw the up-down days every single uh, day, I think where it's really heading is people trying to figure out what to do right now. What I mean by that is you saw this sharp increase in bond yields over the last few weeks. And at the same time, what's been uh, tough for people to figure out, if there have been many days where bond yields are higher and so is stocks, or bond yields are lower and so is stocks, that's not a normal relationship. So what that tells me is that right now you're seeing a little bit of a uh, adjustment of assets, if you will. Not completely surprising if you think about the time of year. We're starting to head into the end of the first quarter. And, in, in, you know, we have a week through Friday, we have quadruple witching expiration in terms of futures, options, stocks. So you often see people readjusting their portfolios, especially big funds around that time. So that, to me, explains a lot of what's going on. And I think as your viewers think about the next few weeks, I think they should think about a volatility range. If you look at the VIX, it just seems hard for me to believe that we don't stay bouncing back and forth between sort of this 22 and 30 on the VIX. As we have sharp down days, people are coming and buy protection. As we go back up, all of a sudden, well, people may feel they don't need it. But I think also the strange relationship between bonds and equities may continue for a few weeks also. Now, JJ, I know at TD Ameritrade, you've got a good handle on investor sentiment and what they're buying and selling. Uh, what are you seeing and what does that tell you about where the market may head? Sure. So, you know, if I look back, uh, we, we released our IMX every month. In fact, we have a new one coming up Monday, which shows what our clients are doing for the month and what I see during the week in between that. It's been really interesting to me as Apple had a tough time, you know, the last couple of months. We've seen Apple, uh, I shouldn't say a couple of months, but, you know, last month or this month, we've seen Apple be a major buy of our clients overall. Kind of interesting from that point of view. Also, the energy stocks, the big energy stocks, the ExxonMobil, the Chevrons of the world, uh, which is, again, we saw an incredible rally so far this year in oil. So that's not completely nonsensical. But the part that may be working against them is with higher rates. At some point, do you start to see them being less appealing from a yield play point of view? Because one other thing about the energy stocks is they tend to be very appealing from yield. Now, I want to put that in perspective. We're still not above one and a half on a 10 year, uh, you know, 10 year yield. But that is something as we head throughout the year to watch. And I think that is, you know, I talk about people mixing, remixing their portfolios. It's interesting to see for me to see how well those stocks are performed over the last few weeks. And lastly, uh, JJ, are there what stock sector or sectors or bonds or fixed income sectors should investors be in right now amidst this period of volatility? People talk about the great rotation, but a lot of those value stocks have appreciated quite a bit, too. Well, you know, it's really interesting to me. I think that I look where our clients are in an area that I find really interesting is sort of the big cap financials. And the reason being, and, and many of them have already had a great move, but as rates continue to go higher, they should be the primary beneficiaries. And the reason I say that is this. Think of the fantastic job they've done with every single headwind over the last few years against them. They've been able to increase fees or go to other areas of business to add to their business. Well, now, if they can start to do what we actually know is true banking functions, you know, paying one rate on savings, lay, blending out at a higher rate on loans, we're, and that goes to a big spread, they can start to send that money right to the bottom line overall because they're operating very lean. And with that, they've also found ways to get other areas where they can charge and they can continue to grow that revenue also. Got it. Okay, thank you. And thanks for the tip about financials. Appreciate it. All right, Fred, always a pleasure. Thank Good you. Good seeing you.
Our thanks to J.J. Kinahan of TD Ameritrade. I'm Fred Katayama in New York. This is Reuters.